Welcome, friends. Wishing you all a very happy new year, and uh, we are delighted to present the uh, first webinar uh, of this year on our 13-part series on media response to crises. This series has been organized by the Press Club Kolkata in collaboration with UNICEF West Bengal. We are delighted to have uh, three very distinguished presenters from uh, three different fields. Uh, one from the field of academics. Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a presenter from uh, UNICEF itself, and we have a, uh, one uh, media person as well. So uh, we'll have a formal introduction of the presenters as we go along. But before we begin, we'll uh, invite our honorable president, uh, uh, Press Club Kolkata, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Dr. Pandey. Welcome to one and all our distinguished panelists and all the participants. Yes, uh, we are in a series, as Dr. Pandey has said, the 13-part series on uh, media's response on crisis, uh, definitely. And uh, today's topic is very, very important from the media perspective. That is anti-human trafficking and anti-child marriage. This is a topic which is covered by media, should be covered by media, with a proper perspective and with a view to getting or obtaining a result, a change in the society. I am extremely, extremely happy today because the participants are distinguished personalities who have been working in this field. The UNICEF participant is a specialist and UNICEF is mandated to do this work. So we are going to hear a lot of uh, important observations from her. The other two participants, I have been fortunate to be knowing both of them since their formative days. And I'm very happy that Onnesha, in spite of her being, I should say, formative days, she has already not only become the assistant editor of a leading Bengali daily, but she has chosen this area herself. And she has consistently been writing on this issue, anti-human trafficking, anti-child marriage, and all other issues relating to children, relating to girl child, relating to women. She has proved that, yes, a space can be generated in the mainstream media if you really be able to identify, to be able to prepare the story, and if you are able to present the story because there are enough takers. The formal introduction will let all of us know that how many awards she has got, including the Chamili Devi Award, including the Best Journalist Award of uh, Kolkata, and etc. etc. I'm extremely happy that she has chosen this area, which many of the journalists and reporters do not, and she has already made a mark. She has traveled extensively, and uh, I'm delighted that uh, she is with us, and she will share the experience, and she will be able to show us the way. And we are happy to learn from her that how that space can be identified, can be created in the mainstream media, and can also have a readership. Dr. Manali Bhattacharya is heading the St. Xavier's University, Kolkata's mass communication department. She has worked elsewhere earlier. She has uh, command over the subject and she takes a lot of issues related to this. And she is a part of formation of the younger journalists or the journalists of the future or those who will take up the IEC component, that is information, education, communication component in various development sectors and all other social sectors. So she is uh, busy in formatting them, especially with a thrust on this area. And as I said, uh, UNICEF representative is a key person passionately working in this issue. So we will have a very good experience, I'm sure. They will narrate from their hearts, their experiences, so we are there to know, upgrade our knowledge and skill. And I think the takeaway will be to get this information, knowledge, skill, so that we can contribute much on these issues 
and as a communicator as a journalist as a reporter it is our duty and this duty can be performed with lot of constraints and the society requires this commitment from the journalist we have learned from this participants and i think their experience when they share will enrich us i will welcome also uh, ms suchorita bordon who has actually conceptualized she is also a very hard core and passionate worker in the development sector whom also i have been knowing for a long time and i know her for her passion and commitment to the development sector especially on this gender issue and issues of children for which she is mandated to work and dr uma shankar pande a media communicator for excellence who has also been a working journalist and of uh, he is a media researcher of international repute and she has uh, kindly agreed to spare her the series i welcome you all our panelists our moderator our uh, project uh, the main person ms bordon and especially the participants if you do not come if you do not participate the exercise will not have any result and i personally believe and i reiterate on each and every occasion that somebody somewhere in the world is creating these resources for us sharing from his own resources that this resources can be generated you all are sparing your time not only the organizers part uh, panelists and participants all you are giving your time so it should be worth and we are going to create a repository which remains online for future and anybody can fall back on this a uh, repository is being created through this experience which will remain there and which will be helpful for the society in future i welcome all of you and wish the today's session a great success dr pande uh, thank you so much mrs nasish sur uh, president press club kolkata for your welcome address it's indeed been a pleasure for us organizing this uh, 13 part webinar series and today is the ninth uh, in that 13 part series on media response to crises and uh, we've been delighted to have a participation of uh, uh, colleagues and uh, journalism students and journalists from all over the country and i, I thank you all again for uh, joining today uh, to this webinar on anti uh, human trafficking and child marriage media's role and responsibilities as uh, the president press club was uh, saying uh, the person behind the show the person who's responsible for conceptualizing this series and uh, making sure that it is implemented in the present form uh, is with us and we are delighted to uh, invite ms shushrita uh, bardhan uh, communication specialist unicef office for west bengal to uh, kindly introduce the topic of the day thank you dr ruma shankar pande for um, those very um, flattering words uh, and also thank you uh, mr snehashi shur who has also been my mentor from a long time um, it has really been a long journey uh, because we've arrived at the ninth Uh, webinar as you can understand so wishing all of you a very happy new year because this is the first uh, of this new year so to both the panelists and the participants uh, we hope that you will be with us not only in this uh, series but also in the forthcoming ones uh, today's topic is a uh, particularly very important and uh, is at the core of unicef's work as you know that the united nations convention on the rights of the child to which india is a signatory has four guiding principles of which one is the right to protection i have my child protection specialist she will spend more time on it i know but i would like to mention that if we are to provide a safe and protected childhood to, to children we have to address trafficking in persons because trafficking we know is a serious crime and a grave human rights violation which is also a child rights violation we have uh, commemorated on 30th july the world day against trafficking in persons we've had discussions between various stakeholders today the most important bit is that all stakeholder representatives are present here today both in terms of the media education media professional and the development sector and why i'm saying this is because our work here is 
focusing on how we can collaborate with media as a development partner in this entire initiative to take forward some of the issues that still need to be addressed and brought into the public domain. We also know about child marriage and if we have to provide an equal equal opportunity for children to grow up to their full potential, we cannot have them married off at an early age. And therefore, both these topics being at the core of child rights is an important area of our work. I am particularly happy also to understand how students who are oriented in mass communication journalism are also oriented on subjects such as these which form the core of child rights. And we will hear more from Dr. Manali Bhattacharya, who's heading the Department of St. Xavier's, as you have already heard. Uh, I am also particularly very interested to hear from Onisha, whom I've heard a lot about from Mr. Snehashi Shur, and I've heard about Onisha's passion to address issues as, as these. My personal belief and conviction is that if there is a good story to say, if there is a good story narration, which we talk about as storytelling, if we have evidence based reporting, then stories such as these on anti human trafficking or child rights or other core areas on child rights is possible. We will hear more about it from our nation. And finally, my colleague Paramita Nyogi has been working in child protection from a long time, she will be formally introduced, but she has at the core of her passion issues on um, ways in which to address uh, trafficking. And she has been working very closely with the government. She has brought in a lot of us so that we can create more awareness around the issue. We can mobilize much more public domain um, uh, discourses around it. And of course, uh, she's also keen, I'm sure, to hear how media can support in taking this initiative further. Without much ado, let me again wish everybody, including all our participants, who's actually making this entire initiative so successful. Thank you very much and look forward to a very meaningful discussion. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Vardhan, for your comments. And it's, it's really been a pleasure, you know, seeing uh, the participation that we have from all over the country. I would... Uh, like to welcome uh, uh, Professor Dr. Ashwin Kumar from Gujarat Vidya Peet and his uh, students. Uh, uh, they've been joining us for uh, the entire uh, series, so it's really nice to see <coughs> people from all over the country. We've uh, had Dr. Monica Verma joining us, one of our uh, former panelists, uh, Shattagupa, Mr. Shattagopal Day. He's also there in the audience, and uh, as are so many students and journalists. So. Uh, uh, now to the uh, business part of the uh, program today. Uh, we'll be having the three presentations from our three uh, panelists, uh, uh, starting off with uh, Dr. Manali Bhattacharya. And as uh, uh, Snyashi uh, sir has already mentioned, she is the uh, head of department of mass communication at the St. Xavier's uh, uh, University, Kolkata. And uh, she specializes in communication theory, marketing communication, and communication research. Uh, she's been teaching for uh, more than f 14 years uh, b b before joining uh, St. Xavier's University. And uh, she's uh, uh, published a number of books, uh, 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 published a number of papers in, in uh, reputed journals. And she's also a PhD supervisor at uh, St. Xavier's University. And uh, among the uh, younger uh, uh, media educators, uh, she's a very accomplished uh, uh, researcher in this particular area. So we are delighted to present uh, uh, Dr. Manali Bhattacharya uh, for this panel. Uh, A very good morning to all of you. Thank you, sir. So thank you so much for your introduction. Uh, thank you, Snehashi, sir, for giving me this opportunity to present here. And uh, thanks to all the panelists. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, child marriage and how it is covered in mass media. So uh, basically, child marriage is uh, something which is there throughout the world. And uh, it is there in India as well. The uh, only thing is these days, media is covering this issue a lot. So we are getting to see a lot of coverage that are happening in media. I have uh, to begin my presentation. I have put a few coverage that media has done. So you can see that uh, even we are aware about the child marriage, the pros and cons of child marriage, but then also it's happening. It's happening uh, everywhere in India. 
so uh, if you can see this clippings it is from various parts of the country whether it's haryana hyderabad tamil nadu uh, west bengal almost everywhere child marriage cases are getting reported and uh, surprisingly during this covid pandemic time uh, if you see the next slide it is showing that many uh, cases have been uh, reported especially during this covid 19 time uh, and it is saying that in the covid 19 time somehow the child marriage uh, thing has uh, increased a lot uh, am i audible yes oh thank you so uh, if you can see that uh, places like telangana karnataka and all uh, everywhere the child marriage has been reported but one good thing that we are seeing from all this reports uh, in some places the family members in some places uh, the girl itself is coming up and protesting against the child marriage reporting it to the uh, police authorities and the also the media is focusing on this so uh, hopefully we all together like with the help of media administration uh, family members i think some day we will be able to come out of this curse but if we see the data uh, which i am giving you in this next slide uh, which, which i have collected for basically from uh, unicef and it is saying that uh, every year around 15 million children gets married including men uh, boys and girls a uh, 650 million women alive today are married as children 1.2 billion it will become by 2050 if we, if we continue in this way and uh, one in every three girls in developing countries get married before 18 years so uh, you know this child marriage is a curse and it is not only among the girls even the boys are also a part of it uh, there are many boys who gets married below 21 like at the age of 15 16 or 18 so uh, the data says that around 150 million men alive today are married as children so this data itself says that uh, even we are aware of the child marriage even we know that these things are there we know how difficult it is for a, a boy or a girl to get married at such a tender age but then also it's happening so uh, if we actually look at what is child marriage uh, in india it is said that as per law child marriage is basically a formal or an informal union uh, between a man or a woman below for women it is below 18 years and for men it is below 21 years and the census data says that in india almost 27% of the girls get married before reaching the age of 18 now these are the official data i'm sure if we look into the unofficial data and everything the number is more so a uh, child marriage which is there which we are discussing a lot it exists even now and you know in many cases uh, when i was reading uh, the media uh, mass me the media campaigns reporting news stories in many cases even the, uh, the girls below 15 years and 16 years sometimes they themselves agree to the marriage because they feel insecure so uh, it is not about always the family pressures and this thing it is also the society pressure which forces people to do this at some times now a child marriage is something which is not very new in india it existed uh, for a long time and if we go back and we check the history uh, so the history says that the first child marriage uh, restricting law was published in 19 it was made in 1929 Uh, when it was said that uh, a girl should not get married before 15 years and the law was known as sarda act which was formed during that time now uh, what are the major issues which relates to this child marriage uh, so one issue is definitely poverty and economical survival strategy uh, yes we live in a country which is not uh, which is in a developing stage so uh, poverty is definitely an issue so for economical survival strategies many people they uh, go for child marriage there is a huge gender equality there is a huge gender inequality in our country uh, especially in several states the ratio was really alarming uh, though the government is trying a lot with certain schemes like beti bachao beti padhao uh, concepts and all uh, but then also the gender inequality remains uh, constant and it's uh, not increasing like it's remains like that only 
Uh, next is control over sexuality and family honor is always there. We actually live in a patriarchal society, so these things is there. Tradition and culture. Uh, you know, in many uh, traditions, it says that a girl should be married within age of eighteen. If you are not getting uh, your girl married within eighteen, then uh, the, the, there are many families even now who face social boycott. Uh, so in the villages and the towns and the cities, uh, they. They were forced uh, that their the parents were told a lot of things if they are not giving their daughter marriage within this age. Insecurity, uh, yes, uh, insecurity for the family reputation, insecurity about the properties, all these things are definitely there, which causes child marriage. And finally, illiteracy and ignorance. Uh, lack of awareness is definitely a very big issue here, and also illiteracy. So uh, education is not at par even now. Uh, there are uh, various people because of poverty, because of uh, lack of logistics. The children are not able to attend schools. So this, all these things lead to illiteracy and ignorance, which definitely causes a problem. Now, uh, these are the major detriments of child marriage. One is the social norms and neglect. Uh, like if you are not getting your daughter married within a uh, a, within a certain age, then the, the relatives and the people start asking question: Why are you not letting your daughter marriage? Why, why she is not getting married, etc., etc. Uh, structural norms are there. The collective uh, community experiences are there. So, if uh, there is always a community pressure, which plays a major role here. So, this pressure is created on the family. This pressure is created on the girl. And uh, if your uh, economic condition is also not very good, then the pressure is more, which is coming from the community. Uh, then uninformed decision making. As I said, that even now we are staying in a patriarchal society. So uh, in many times the decisions on the girls were imposed by their fathers or brothers for various reasons. And as we know in India, that there are many a time the marital ties and knots were also based on certain economic issues, uh, where the economic things are there. And so to gain something, to come out of certain disputes, also they let their girls marry. Uh, health and life outcomes are there, and the macro environment factors. So these are the main determinants of child marriage, which uh, are really there and which exist and which causes a lot of problems. Now, what are the impacts and consequences that can happen because of this child marriage? One is a domestic violence. If you get your uh, daughter or son married before they are matured enough to handle a relationship like this, of course, there will be a uh, domestic violence incidents uh, before they actually understand what is this marital thing. Uh, many a time they get pregnant. So it in fact, uh, it actually leads to the poor reproductive health. Uh, which can also lead to maternal morbidity. And uh, the most important thing is even a child who is born out of this entire situation either is unhealthy or is facing a lot of trouble. So all these things are there. Uh, education gets stopped. In most of the cases, once a child gets married, uh, the, especially for the girls, the education is stopped. Uh, then sustainable livelihood is a problem because, you know, if a boy is getting married at the age of 15 or 16, uh, he doesn't know whether he is going to be established in his life or not. Before he is established, he was put in a lot of burden. You are putting a wife, you are putting a child, and then you are expecting the person also to behave. So all these things actually together lead to a poor uh, life, a poor civil life, a poor sexual life, and a poor reproductive health also. we can prevent the child marriage so the first is uh, educate parents and we have to educate the girl you know it is very very important that people should be educated there is a difference between uh, making a person literate and making a person educate yes you can say that if a person is able to sign he is a literate person but that is not education education is brings empowerment education brings awareness Education actually brings, uh, actually tells a person what are your rights? How can you fight? If you are at, getting married at such a tender age, where you can go? Which are the areas where you can protest? There are certain NGOs who are doing wonderful job in this, but then the person need to know that I can go and approach an NGO 
the person need to know that there are laws which will help me to stop from this all this thing so these are the things which they have to understand so education is extremely important and to create awareness basically we need a positive role of mass media which is very very important specifically in our country the audio visual media the radio and the television needs to uh, take extra steps to make people aware about the wrong consequences of the child marriage now uh, educating girl is definitely the most important tool to prevent child marriage you know a young bride only gets to study as much as a family want and most of the time they actually lack the supports they are not able to continue their education because uh, their family is not wanting them to study and when you are with your in laws as i was telling that economical pressure also stays so many a time it financially also they were not able to afford the education or logistically and then there is again a chance of getting pregnant once you get married so all these things stop people from uh, getting educations uh, so we can go to the next slide okay uh, the next one is health so uh, as per the un fpa 2013 data it says that uh, 20% of the girls become mother before the age of 15 in india i'm talking about 45% low weight and stunted children are born 5% of the women who are aged below 18 face risk of death during the childbirth so these are the health consequences that happens when you get your daughter married at such a young age there are laws of course there are laws but the problem is whether those law people are aware about those or not that is the most important thing they many of the people doesn't know which are the doors they can knock if they are having this kind of problem uh, there is prohibition of child marriage act which was formed in 2006 and uh, there are lots of things which are there there were proper punishments which were also there if somebody is violating it but the problem is uh, the awareness we don't know whether people are aware about it or not so here comes the role of mass media Uh, mass media actually need to be more informative they need to inform people like there are special hotline numbers where you can call a girl can actually call those hotline numbers if uh, forcefully she is getting uh, she is getting married to somebody uh, before uh, age of 18 so this kind of awareness has to be there and for this we need strong mass media content it's not, not only covering new stories is going to help this because uh, along with this we need other things like media should talk about education advocating education is extremely important uh, here i just want to mention one point uh, in certain media content we see uh, even now the child marriage is glorified a lot i'm not talking about the new stories only because you know in the new stories they actually talk about the real incident something that has happened and the follow up things but when i'm talking about a child marriage uh, we have to reach out to the people who are staying in the rural india now to reach out to them we have to have strong media content maybe in the form of a serial maybe in the form of documentaries or films or advertisements on the contrary what media is doing the media content they are rather glorifying child marriage Uh, i can give you one example there was a serial called balika vadhu which used to come in colors a few years back and that was the most hit show of colors it was the top show for almost 2 years and the main concept of that story was uh, the child marriage a uh, boy and a girl get married of course they have shown the wrong consequences also but at the beginning they have glorified that child marriage concept so in a country like india where we are fighting with this kind of curse i think the content should be a bit different we should not talk about this there were one more uh, serial which actually came in te sony television but it was withdrawn because of the public protest where it was shown that a small boy of 14 15 years got married to a girl of 18 19 years so 
this kind of content is actually not correct when you are trying to stop child marriage when you are trying to stop uh, when you are trying to build more and more awareness so instead of this if we can focus on more inspirational stories where a girl is stopping a child marriage where a girl is coming out of that and building his or her building her career so this kind of stories we should give more important the media should play an important role in shaping public disclosure on the child marriage it, they need to be mobilized as an important contributor for development and uh, unfortunately uh, even now when we see uh, media content most of the uh, stories which are related to child marriage or social development uh, we see they in the back pages there are very few stories there are very few incidents which come on the front page so majority of them are in the back page of the newspapers and when we listen to the 24/7 television channels we actually are getting more and more political crime news and all hardly hardly we actually see uh, this kind of uh, news which were talking about developmental stories the news which were talking about uh, child marriage talking about the people who are fighting against the child uh, the people who are fighting against the child marriage so this kind of stories had to come more in the front pages more on the headlines which are very rare uh, a few months back there was a story which was covered by anand bajar uh, where a girl uh, said no for child marriage uh, she was pressurized by her family so uh, she got support from her grandmother and then they were staying separately because her family said if you are not going to if you are not getting married so we will not keep any relationship with you so she stayed with her grandmother and both of them used to uh, run swing they used to do swing things and all and that's how she was continuing the study so that was a very inspirational story but unfortunately the follow up was not there that story came for one day as a developmental news in i think the story came in a fifth or sixth page but after that there were no follow up stories like what happened to the girl whether she was able to fight it out or whether she succumbed to the pressure so that was not there so i think uh, this kind of things are very important where media should be ethically more responsible for the follow up stories uh now we can go to the next one the media actually uh, should uh, walk a fine line between advocacy and reinforcing the negative perceptions and uh, the civil society organizations should be more uh, opportunities to expand the reach of their media stories so uh, one thing uh, that i always discuss with the students even uh, since we are having masters course also so our master students also sometimes says that uh, ma'am the follow up stories are always missing so if we get to know about one incident that has happened uh, which is really good we felt good about it but then there is no follow up about it and if we want to know if you search in some other places we don't get it so uh, maybe with the advent of digital media uh, the digital media is almost there in each one of our life maybe the follow up stories will be much better because you know if the follow up stories are there uh, then i think with one inspiration stories five other people can also get inspired if that's those things were shown on television or on radio if this can be broadcasted so it will be much better uh in reality what we basically see is that uh, majority of the news stories as i was saying that it gets the back pages and uh, the follow up stories are very less and then another thing uh, as was talking that uh, there are hardly content in the uh, serials that we watch serials are very popular i must say that whether it's a bengali serial whether it's a hindi serial uh, you know serials and the series are very very popular but hardly we see that uh, people are choosing this as a content and talking about it uh, they are talking about the bad parts of it there are very one or two out of 10 maybe one or two you get to where you are talking about it rest all serials are talking about something different so uh, here if we can actually deliver the content if we can make documentaries with them if we can make real life uh, inspirational stories from them then i think that can create a more 
uh, impact on the people uh, next is uh, another very important area which we can be which can be used for creating awareness against child marriage is uh, advertising content as we know advertisements are very very strong and very popular uh, during this covid 19 we have seen that almost every brand has used health communication as a one of their promotional element so uh, even ajanta chappal ads was talking about how you can use ajanta chappal in your home and so covid virus will not enter your through your uh, it will not affect your legs or hands or this and that's so almost every brand in some or the other have linked themselves with this health communication covid 19 so we can also think about this there was one ads of dabar vatika which talks about it which talks about educating girl children definitely but we need more brands to come up who should talk about this cause who can take up this cause and use this in their promotional campaign so uh, the people who are into advertisements they can actually use this in their content and to create more and more awareness uh, another is uh, glorifying child abuse is also not right many times we have seen in media Uh, many stories were covered where uh, it was shown that how uh, the children were killed by another child uh, maybe because of uh, love affairs or something like that uh, which i think the age is better not to mention because you know there are some children especially at this age they uh, think take it in a different way so they feel very happy about it so those are not very right are uh, just a suggestion since i have discussed this with the students and the students they will be aspiring journalists or advertisers in the coming future so uh, they also told me that ki mam media actually should try to uh, no, treat survivors not as object they should not try that i mean the survivors should get a proper importance and uh, many a time the questions which were asked by the journalist to the survivors of the child marriage who are coming out of this or who are suffering this who are fighting a legal battle etc etc uh, the question sometimes violates dignity so uh, this the people should be more cautious because one is a tender age another is anyways they are fighting alone uh, to with all this courses and also that is one important so so we can go to the next slide uh, next is a uh, another what we have seen in cases of this human trafficking child marriage cases uh, sensational headlines are used now to every news has become a breaking news so every time we see on television breaking news it's breaking here first time etc etc and a lots of sensational kind of headlines were used uh, the facts were blurred or exaggerated uh, to get more trps and all so you know this kind of things are not actually going to help uh, stop this curse rather it is uh, glorifying this entire thing and uh, there are many families there are many children who also get inspired to become they also want to be headlines they want to be in the headlines so it creates a problem so rather than doing that sensationalization uh, what i think it will be better if we can actually talk about the real incidents what were the consequences and how we can stop this so next time how we can stop this uh, so this is uh, what i wanted to present to all of you about the child marriage and what media can do one thing i must say that okay. yes uh, awareness was there yes awareness we should thank media especially the news media for creating this awareness okay. but uh, one more thing is media should actually try to give it into their content as well thank you sir uh thank you so much dr vadacharya for your presentation uh, thank you uh, so much for this uh, well researched uh, presentation uh, we'll be uh, going for the question and answer at the end of the session and uh, now it, it's uh, uh, my privilege to invite ms paramita nyogi uh, 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 to deliver her lecture uh, she is a child protection specialist at the unicef office for west bengal and uh, she's been uh, at this position for the last 12 years uh, she holds a masters degree in social work from delhi university and masters in development studies from the university college dublin ireland and she's uh, she has an experience of more than 24 years in pursuing the agenda of prevention of uh, child marriage child abuse child labor and child trafficking through program implementation networking uh, 
training, monitoring, and advocacy. She's worked extensively with uh, the government systems, police, judiciary, civil, uh, and civil society organizations. We are delighted to have you on the panel today, ma'am. So the stage is all yours. Ms. Paramita Nyogi. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning and thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Omar Shankar Pandey, uh, for, for the introduction. Uh, this is uh, a very important topic, addressing child marriage and child trafficking is an extremely important topic for child protection. And also a very important discourse uh, for the state. Uh, media practitioners uh, definitely have a huge role in uh, shaping the public discourse and in uh, educating people in this regard. Uh, since I lead the child protection program within UNICEF, I will start by introducing child protection uh, as to what is child protection. And as UNICEF defines, child protection refers to preventing and responding to violence, exploitation, abuse, and neglect against children, also including prevention of separation of children from their families. So this is how the whole gamut of child protection program is all about. And uh, child protection issues are extremely sensitive and invisible issues. And uh, not only in terms of uh, dealing with the issues that are intensely personal, for example, dealing with issues like violence, uh, abuse, violence within homes, violence by close family members, by parents, uh, abuse uh, within families, within uh, relatives. But at the same time, all these issues are uh, thoroughly guided by the legal framework. And it, there are international protocols that are followed by uh, national laws. There are advisories, guidelines, policies. All of these are in place. And these are in place to safeguard the rights and dignity of children uh, as human persons. It's, it's not only about being sensitive issues, but it's also creating a balance between the sensitivity and also complying with the legal standards. And that is why handling and addressing these issues are so complex in nature. West Bengal, as all of you understand, has been in the news uh, for a very long time owing to its large incidences of uh, missing traffic children and more recently on the high incidence of child marriage. The NCRB 2019 data highlights that West Bengal shares almost 7.6% of the total cases reported on human trafficking nationally from the states, moving from the rank of number one to the rank of number six in the last two to three years. Similarly, we also know of more than 8,000 children missing in 2019 alone. But the silver lining is that the recovery rate of the state is also more than 65%. However, child marriage is at 41.6%, and it is the same as it was in NFHS uh, 4. So NFHS 5 also reflects 41.6% of child marriage which means that 41 children out of 100 children are married in the state. I think most of you are also aware that West Bengal's long porous borders with Bangladesh and Nepal contributes to cross-border trafficking and also movement from other states by families with children or without children. A lot of children move across the borders uh, international borders as well as the state borders on their own independently. And we need to remember that trafficking occurs not only for commercial sexual exploitation, but also for forced labor. We hear and discuss a lot about the exploitation of children for uh, commercial sexual work, but we need to understand that large number of children are already in the workforce. And that must be further discussed and brought to, the, brought to the forefront. We hardly talk about child labor. We hardly talk about the conditions in which children work. And the emerging trend is that, especially after COVID-19, that more and more children are getting into the workforce. And children in commercial sexual exploitation has always been high for the state. In terms as I mentioned earlier, that it's guided by a lot of uh, national laws and policies. 
So if you look at the legal framework, uh, child marriage and child trafficking, both of them are guided by the national legislation, like the Prohibition of Child Marriage Act 2006, the JJ Act, the POXO Act 2012, the Immoral Traffic Prevention Act. Uh, also, you must, must be knowing about the Press Council Act, uh, the, uh, the Indian Penal Code, IPC, the IT Act. And all these acts are very much relevant for the media people as they provide necessary guidance uh, on reporting incidences of uh, such issues. UNICEF's programming in child protection, as we are mandated to work closely with the government, it involves uh, a lot of uh, technical support and inputs uh, in developing guidelines, policies, action plans, and monitoring framework uh, in addressing both child marriage and child trafficking in the state. Supporting community level implementation with district administration for generating evidence for systems to be strengthened to respond uh, uh, appropriately in cases where uh, different issues in child protection are uh, reported. I would like to highlight uh, three key support that was provided to the government uh, in the past few years, and uh, that is relevant uh, for today's discussion. The first one is the West Bengal uh, Task Force that is under the Department of Women and Child Development uh, within the Directorate of Child Rights and Trafficking that uh, works towards expediting the repatriation and restoration of children from the state in coordination with several other departments who are involved in movement and restoration of such children, including the law enforcement. I am not sure how many of you know about the West Bengal Task Force, but uh, this uh, task force has always been extremely active in the state, and it has helped in uh, repatriating and restorating uh, hundreds of children every year. And this is, this is not uh, um, just handing over children uh, from one state, one NGO to the other, but it's more through the uh, proper government uh, systems and through the government uh, infrastructure. The second one is the development of the state plan of action for combating human trafficking. Uh, this state plan of action clearly outlines the responsibilities of each department in addressing human trafficking. And the third one is the state guidelines for media personnel on uh, child protection issue that was published uh, sometime around 2017-2018. Now, these have been some of the initiatives, apart from the many other initiatives that the government of West Bengal uh, has undertaken with UNICEF support. Um, over the years, we have observed that the uh, coverage in, in, uh, around incidences of child marriage and child trafficking uh, has improved, while it is also mentioned by my previous speaker that they have hardly uh, reserve the front page of the newspapers. But the coverage has also improved in quality. This is one thing that we have observed in the past six, seven years, that it has featured girls as uh, advocates, as leaders. It has included a lot of uh, success stories uh, that has uh, been uh, lead, led by girls. It has uh, focused on, um, it has done a lot of analysis of the data that is available. Uh, it has focused on numbers and also uh, on rates of incidences happening across districts. Uh, and it has also identified the multiple players that are, uh, that are actively involved in addressing issues like child marriage and child trafficking. Now, uh, however, uh, having said that, uh, there are a few issues that I would like to uh, highlight. Uh, and uh, these are uh, also some of the suggestions that I would like to uh, bring up uh, in this discussion today. The first uh, is, uh, of course, the media has an important role in shaping the public discourse, but uh, it also has to be handled more sensitively uh, about, the, mm, about the different, the many and the changing manifestations of uh, uh, the ways and the reasons for which child marriage and child trafficking is taking place and present the problem in, in much more details. Why I'm saying this is in the, in the current uh, scenario, 
every day we find that uh, if we if we think of child trafficking every day we see that the modus operandi of the traffickers is changing they move from one place to another whenever the focus is on one district the uh, immediately the network moves to some other district and more and more children are trafficked from the other district so so it is very important to keep in line with the pace and the information that is available on the operational strategies and the operational procedures that the traffickers follow and the reasons for which child marriage takes place we need to uh, focus on the underlying causes uh, a lot of times we have realized that all these uh, news items that comes in the in the print media in the social media they are news i mean somewhere when you cover issues in child protection you have to make it into a report you have to make it into a sensitive report you have to talk about why is it that child marriage and child trafficking is happening what are the causes that leads to child marriage and child trafficking very uh, on the, uh, superficially we can say that it's poverty it's uh, lack of education but why is it i mean what are the reasons for it is it only poverty that leads is it that a poor family all the poor family uh, they give their daughters to marriage all the poor families they sell their daughters for trafficking that is not the case then why is it that some families are more uh, uh, getting their daughters married at an early age uh, and while others are not so we need to get deeper into the reasons why uh, child marriage and child trafficking is happening and uh, portray the girls more ethically and responsibly my previous speaker has mentioned this that when we narrate the stories it is important that we don't take away the girls agency we don't take away that uh, the rights of the girls and we 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 present them as a more passive character as a more recipient of what is coming to them that that makes it very important that whenever possible it's important to reflect the child's wishes the child's aspirations the child's dreams what is it that the child wants to do and why is it that the child is not able to do it and that makes the story more powerful and that makes the story different from what a news item generally carries it's also important that the privacy of the child and the privacy of the community from where the story is covered is maintained and uh, of course follow up as was mentioned by earlier that follow up is extremely important we have seen several several cases where uh, there was a lot of media hype on certain cases the child was uh, brought into the picture the community the families everyone was interviewed and then finally uh, after that nothing happened so any case any story that is covered it's important to go back and find out what happened what is it that it was it anything good did the coverage help the child did the coverage help the family or it did not where is it that the child is and what is it that the child is doing so the follow up definitely is extremely important and in doing that the media can also play a role of a watchdog being very vigilant about how the different policies the guidelines the action plans that i mentioned earlier these have been developed these are there these are every effort is being made to implement all of these how much of that has been implemented where are the gaps has it actually reached to the people for whom it was intended to be uh, designed so those are some of the so those are the some of the issues that should come up in the reports and that makes the story different from any news item it's also important to link the different issues like for example when we talk about child marriage and we talk about child trafficking these are interrelated issues a lot of child trafficking happens in under the uh, guise of child marriage children are married and then they are trafficked they are abused so and then they are pulled into labor so all of these are interrelated and somewhere we have to understand that interrelatedness among the issues and report accordingly to see how it fits into one another and why is it that each one of them are contributing in the way they are 
I also mentioned about uh, underlying causes. It's very important, especially in the case of uh, child trafficking, to understand we always have a tendency to talk about uh, girls being trafficked, uh, parents selling of their girls, or parents uh, sending of their girls to work with unknown people, not knowing where are they going, what work they will be involved in. But it is also important to understand why the traffickers are doing such a thing, where they, they are aware that it's an offense. The parents know that child marriage is an offense. Still, they get their girls married. The traffickers are aware that it's an offense, but still they do. They get involved in trafficking. So what are those drivers? What are those driving forces that are forcing children, their parents, and traffickers to get involved in, in incidences, in uh, issues that are an offense uh, by law? It's this interrelatedness of one issue to the other. It is also important to highlight that why it is important to work hand in hand. It's not only about issues, but it's also about the service providers. So if the service providers don't work in hand in hand, then it is not possible to address any of these issues that are so important in child protection. For example, the child who is in labor, for example, or the child who has been married, she is the marriage is prevented. She is brought back to the family. She goes to the school. So if she goes to the school, then it, that is, it is important that the school education comes in. The school education department is worked with, or she gets into some training. So the technical education department comes in, or she gets into some sports. So where does all this happen from? There is a case that is uh, being fought in the court. So the judiciary comes in, the police comes in. So all these are interrelated. And that is where the interrelatedness and the need to work together uh, to bring out a sustainable solution is extremely important. And that brings me to the next area where the news should also have information on the avenues from where the support for the victims and their families should come in. We know that children, if even if we consider that poverty is one of the reasons for child labor, child marriage, child trafficking, we also have to understand that if poverty is the reason, then there has to be avenues to support the family. There has to be uh, information on how to support the family. And that information should also be there as part of the report. That what are the different services that are available for the families and that how that can be brought together and how that family can be uh, benefited from the services that are available to strengthen the family and prevent the separation of the child uh, from the family. It's uh, to provide insight to the journalists, to the practitioners uh, in media, not only through training, it's, it's not about ensuring development of their skills, but, uh, but to identify ways to uh, reposition uh, state level strategies to address and report on stories related to child marriage and child trafficking. That is very important as far as the media practitioners are concerned. It's important to understand how to interview children. What do we ask them? Do we ask them straight questions? How do we interview children? Because in the very beginning, I said these are very sensitive issues. So how do you talk to children? How do you take images? How do you use images in the reports? These are some of the things that are uh, that are uh, that should be kept in mind. The other thing that very often comes to my mind whenever I see all these reports coming up in the print media or in the social media, how it comes. 16 year old prevented uh, uh, the marriage in so and so place, or 15 girls rescued, 15 trafficked girls res rescued from uh, so and so district in so and so state. These are victims. They are victims. These children are victims. Can we can we turn the lens? Can we turn the perspective, the, the way we narrate the story into saying that 25 year old man was marrying a 16 year old girl who that and that marriage was prevented by the so and so the Gram Panchat members or the SAG members or the block administration? Can we can we change that narrative? Because the perpetrator, the accused, the offender, he or she has to be highlighted. That person has to come forth. That person needs to be punished. 
And anyway, in West Bengal, we have a very low conviction rate. So we need to bring the offender, the perpetrator to the forefront and not the victim. So if we can change the narrative, the way we use the language, the way we share the uh, stories, that is extremely important. And I think that can be, if that can be taken up as a suggestion. Uh, finally, I have uh, two uh, requests to uh, both to all the, I mean, to, to the media uh, people present today and to press club that I mentioned about the media um, guidelines that was developed by DWCD sometime around 2018, 2017-18. If it is possible to review the media guidelines once again and to see uh, if uh, it is applicable. I don't know how many people have uh, seen the media guidelines, how many people use them um, in their day-to-day -day reporting uh, for you know, children's issues. But um, it would be good if we can jointly review the uh, media guidelines once again to make it a more user friendly guideline so that everyone can use it. Um, uh, it, it is possible to revise and uh, I mean, take, bring it to the attention of the department. And uh, finally, I would like to hear from uh, the people, the participants present here today that how can we work together how can we join hands in addressing trafficking and child marriage in the districts because uh, because the whole uh, agenda of child marriage and child trafficking it's not possible for government um, service providers to have people in every nook and corner to report them of incidences happening. It's important that the community comes forth. It's important that we have more and more community level cadres, more and more volunteers who comes forth to report on the incidences, to see if the systems are functioning and to respond to the uh, needs of the uh, children and the women and their families. So how can media uh, come together uh, to respond to the needs of children in addressing uh, child marriage and child trafficking. Um, I, I, I'll stop here. And uh, thanks for your attention and your patience. And uh, I will look forward to answering any queries that are there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Nyogi, for your comments. And we'll try and see whether the uh, 2017 document uh, can be uh, shared with our participants today. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, continue the conversation uh, even beyond these webinars. As we have suggested, all these things are available on, will be available on the YouTube after uh, uh, the deliberations are over. And our uh, eight previous sessions have also been recorded and uh, shared with participants and with uh, all the stakeholders uh, everywhere. Uh, we've also been sharing many other documents and we have created uh, some YouTube videos and other things that have been shared with uh, students and media persons and everybody else. Uh, so we'll uh, keep on, you know, having this uh, conversation uh, so that we can sustain these uh, uh, efforts uh, beyond the webinar series as well. Thank you once again for such a well-researched uh, presentation. Thank you. It's been really very helpful. And we'll try and see whether we can get the document right now and share with the participants. I'm delighted to welcome uh, a very prominent journalist, uh, of uh, Ms. Uh, Onisha Banerjee to our panel today. Uh, she is the assistant editor at A. Shamoy, uh, a very prominent uh, newspaper in India. And as a journalist, her interest ranges from social issues to politics, to human interest stories, uh, to uh, trending stories. And she was nominated by the U.S. consulate, uh, Kolkata, for the Edward Muro program for journalists in 2015-2016. And she attended the same in 2016, in the months of October, November. And that is when the 2016 American... Uh, presidential elections were on. So uh, during that time, she also uh, covered the U.S. presidential elections for her newspaper. Uh, she spent uh, uh, in 2013, she spent 21 days across New Delhi, West Bengal, Maharashtra to write on human trafficking industry. And she was in a rescue operation that involved trafficked children, traffickers, middlemen, police and NGO workers. And this 21-day uh, 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 trip uh, resulted in a series of nine news stories for her newspaper. She was honored with the International Youth Champions uh, Conclave 2019 for her contribution to combat human trafficking. She's won the uh, largely media awards, which uh, uh, Sir was suggesting, funded by UNFPA and Population First consecutively for three years in 2014, 2015 and 2016. And again in 2020, she was recently awarded the Shishushri Award by the West Bengal uh, Child Rights Commission for her article on child rights in the year 2018 and 2019. She also won the prestigious Ramnath Goenka Memorial Award in 2018. She holds a master's degree in uh, 
history from Jadavpur University and also a PG diploma in mass communication and master in business law from the National Law School, India, uh, National Law School uh, uh, University. So uh, her, her uh, credentials are too huge. So I'll, I'll just stop here and uh, hand uh, it over to her for her presentation today. It's over to you, Ms. Anisha Banerjee. Thank you for inviting me in this uh, group. Uh, I am just a cop journalist. I am uh, I am really happy that I have uh, got this uh, platform to share my views on human trafficking and child marriages. I believe that uh, media's role and responsibility is huge here. And how is media treating these two issues? I will address that. Uh, so first slide, please. So uh, first of all, I want to address the general roles of media. It's uh, everyone uh, know uh, by now, it's to inform, to educate, and to entertain. But another one we often left out, that is to investigate. And both this child marriage and human trafficking is part of the investigative journalism. It is to inform, it is to educate. These two are separate things which I am coming later on. But without investigating human trafficking industry and child marriages issues, no one can write a single story on that. This is as far my opinion goes and my experience goes. For last eight years, I am covering these uh, two fields. Actually, I am covering gender issues and uh, child rights. So from that perspective, I find that if you don't investigate, you won't actually get the story, what we are actually looking for. So, uh, so what is the social responsibilities of media? Media has certain so uh, social responsibilities. So firstly, it is justifying itself as a social institution. In many cases, you would hear, uh, especially I am focusing on the news media because I am a news personnel and I am coming from that background. So what I am telling that justifying itself as a social institution is a primary requirement because many times uh, you may have heard or you will hear that your editor is saying that you are not a reformist. You are not here to reform. But still, I believe media is a social institution. There is a lot to do for the society. And without society, media cannot survive. We have to show certain things. We have to become the part of the society in order to make society understand certain things. So first of all, providing a voice to the voiceless, bridging the communication gaps, playing an active role in policy formation and execution, working as the watchdog of the society, and being accountant to, accountable to the people. So it is uh, very much important providing a voice to the voiceless. Why it is very important? Because if media just address the who's who of the society, there is no use of reading newspaper or watching news channels because they are always in news and we always cover them. But there are a huge, huge, huge section which are voiceless and which actually want a support. If they get a little support, they can do wonders. So here comes the media. So media can bridge the communication gaps and also provide them a voice so that their stories are heard and they can go further. So uh, playing an, uh, after that, uh, playing an active role in policy formation and execution. In many cases, uh, when papers are uh, given on the newspaper, uh, if there are new laws are coming, there are always, uh, they ask for the public opinion. So here, media personnel can give their opinion. Like in uh, very recently, uh, one thing has uh, happened uh, that uh, National Human Rights uh, Commission has tagged sex workers as informal worker. 
so here is a huge uh, cry with uh, that and after that many media organizations as well as several ngos have approached them and later on they have revised their order and told that they should get the humanitarian support but sex worker not be tagged as the informal worker because it has a direct uh, proximity and direct relation with the human trafficking industry so there are uh, many issues and lastly uh, <clears throat> working as the watchdog of the society if we don't do that then we are failing our primary duty it is our duty to watch what is happening to question to question is the primary uh phase of the media why shouldn't we question if we see anything we must question certain issues we must question the authority we must question the government we must question everyone whenever there are uh, certain uh, issues and certain irregularities or there are some pending issues we will do because lastly we are accountable to the people only not to anyone so this is the social responsibility of the media and here comes the social evils like child labor dowry witch hunting gender based violence child marriage human trafficking everything can be fought by the media and with the media and these are part of the development journalism this is not uh, you cannot tell that uh, this is a mainstream journalism i am very sorry to say this is not actually mainstream journalism this is part of development journalism which is now featured in the mainstream journalism and have been getting space in the broadsheet as well as in some cases on the news channels and on social media so what is uh, development journalism why uh, human trafficking and child marriage falls under the ambit of the development journalism there are certain points because it promotes and contributes to the human development focuses on helping people meet their basic needs empowers people to articulate their concern and manage their development and to do away with the poverty and inequality it is both pragmatic and unconventional in its approach of, approach to reporting so it falls under the ambit of development journalism now i am coming to to this topic uh, what is media's role in stop preventing child marriage and in preventing human trafficking and fighting human trafficking so first of all child marriage is prohibited in india if child marriage happens anywhere in the country it is the duty of the media to report it in many cases the police and administration are informed through the media now the question is how do you know that child marriage is happening who is going to inform you that so here here comes the issue of convergence here comes the issue of uh, agencies and their collaborations so there should be gram panchayat there should be vlcpc there should be vlcpc there are several several organizations and several bodies which should keep an eye on the child marriages and if it happens either it will dial 1098 or it will inform child uh, child protection officers or it will inform police in some way that has to be done or if not anything they can come to the media media can play two roles here one they can income the concerned authority that this is happening you go there and stop it and the second thing they can brought out they can bring out stories which will avert the people which will make people avert that why child marriage must not take place in our country and why not only in our country in the world and why this is a crime in many cases uh, i can say in uh, from our paper in two three cases police and administration have got the information and they have actually stopped the child marriage uh so media and child marriage the media can and should play an important role in shaping public discourse on child marriage
this is very 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 important because public first has to understand that child marriage is a crime and you one individual everyone should be should be very much aware of the fact that whenever there is a child marriage taking place it should be informed to the to the authority that be it a police be it an ngo or child protection officer of the district anyone it is individuals duty to inform like i am telling maybe uh, the person who is working at your home her girl uh, her uh, girl child is marrying off at the age of 15 if you get to know that and if you support her that is you are the silent supporter of the child marriage what you should do you actually should stop this thing and you must not encourage you must not encourage that this marriage should go on and you must make her understand that why child marriage is a bad thing so it should also come on the story when we are writing the story we are also bringing the evils of the social uh, evils of the child marriage and why child marriage is harming a kid be it a boy or be it a girl in both the cases they are actually depriving of their basic rights so they have every right to study till 18 and till uh, for 14 years of age uh, they are uh, they should get the free education so this thing should be mentioned in the story as well and uh, media must walk a fine line between the advocacy and reinforcing this is also very important because media has to play this role otherwise media is failing because in every cases media cannot be neutral in some cases media has to take certain sides and when we are discussing child marriage and child tra uh, trafficking or social evils like that so we have to be very careful and have to uh, walk a fine line between advocacy and reinforcing the media needs to be mobilized as an important contributor to development this is everyone knows and media is doing that nowadays now social rep uh, social segment reporting development journalism has increased and uh, civil society organization should be more opportunistic to expand the reach of their media stories this always happen because in many cases uh, if ngos have uh, stopped the child marriage or human trafficking they call up us they told that what they have done we speak to the survivors and then write it and as much as focus it can get we tr always try uh, that uh, this story should not be uh, lost in transition and it should be focused properly so that in a visible place so that more and more people can read it and we also highlight those uh, ngos or social welfare bodies which are doing this good job uh, because uh, we if we don't encourage them uh, they may uh, feel let down so we also put the names of the ngos that which are helping along with the police and administration and the media has a role to play portraying the girl ethically and responsibly i think this is being done now because uh, nowadays uh, there are awareness that how to portray a uh, survivor and in many uh, in many cases uh, there are positive stories about the, them and in mostly these are the positive stories which can inspire others uh, i can say that i have written so many stories on the trafficking survivors and in in all the cases now they have uh, stand on their own foot and uh, they are uh, doing job they are earning for their families they are now happy so these things and how they have come back how they have left their traumatic days how they have come back uh, this phase 
how the traffickers are arrested uh, for uh, their courage and how they are convicted all these things are focused and so while we are portraying the girl we are very very careful about that and only you can use a pseudonym nothing else not even the locality of the girl so that the girls uh, girls is being recognized by anyone so this has to be a uh, very done carefully and i think uh, we are doing that so while reporting the child marriage identifying or uh, uh, the girl or photographs of the child children cannot be revealed the harmful of child marriage should be corroborated into the story and the media should be accountable to the communities and individuals they cover so this is the part of the child marriage and now i am coming to the part of the human trafficking and uh, both for the human trafficking and child marriage knowing the law is very 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 important you have to understand the law of the land while uh, <clears throat> writing the stories and law of the land like prevention of uh, child marriages uh, I itpa act ipc crpc the basic provisions poxo the uh, basic provisions you must know if you don't know the basic provisions you cannot question the police or administration because there are many lacuna in between and if you don't know the law you just cannot put the question to them they will answer anything and you will write anything and that makes no sense for the story so what is human trafficking human trafficking is the illegal handing over girls or boys to any person in exchange of money that is human trafficking what are the motives of human trafficking that is sex trafficking child labor bonded labor begging there are several several things uh, for recruiting in the massage parlor for commercial sexual exploitation so there are several issues relating to the human trafficking that why human trafficking is happening now how to cover stories on it this is very very important uh, covering human trafficking stories are not at all easy when i have started i felt that if you don't feel the issue if you cannot go inside the issue you just cannot write what is human trafficking you just write okay one uh, man came to the village he picked up a girl and left after that the girl was sold to the brothel the end of the story this cannot be the story on a human trafficking human trafficking should be covered from at least three sides what is the source state what is the destination state what is the motive of the human trafficking and the other thing is when a girl is being victimized when the girl is being trapped or the uh, little children are being trapped not only the girls girls actually uh, make a huge percentage i think if i am not wrong almost 76 76 to 80% are uh, girls uh, in trafficking and rest are boys so uh, naturally it, uh, i am uh, talking about uh, girl but there are boys also so how they are trapped what is the mo <coughs> modus operandi this all must be in the story and what is the purpose of the coverage for that you have to know the human trafficking laws you have to know what you can write and what you cannot write if you write what are the legal provisions if you give the identity of the girl or the boy what can happen to you so all the legal provisions you must keep in mind the so what is society uh, saying about this trafficked uh, victims that should be kept in mind and that should be incorporated in the story now how to portray a survival stories this is also very important but nowadays what we do actually uh, we give a space to the survivors and the survivors tell their own stories in most cases i found that survivors are not very uh, comfortable in saying their past experience uh, 
because they have come out of that they had mental trauma they have been counseled now they have been given a job uh, either they are going to school again or colleges they are trying to have uh, trying to make their own living so they want to talk the positive side so a journalist duty is to focus on that not the thing uh, that uh, what happened to you how many customers used to come to you how many times did you get uh, raped every day this kind of uh, things you must not ask to the survivors you just give the space to the survivor who can tell his or her story and how she is fighting her own battle with the support from the police administration ngo and every single individual so what are the points that one should keep in mind while reporting it i have told that there should not be any identification there uh, should be provision of the laws there should be a keen eye in, uh, keen uh, eye that whether proper sections are been given that is why laws are very very important in west bengal i can say in many cases it is only the case of abduction and kidnapping being lodged in case of trafficking so section 370 is the trafficking section and it is not given in many cases because uh, maybe the girl quote unquote willingly has gone and in 164 of crpc that means the secret uh, uh a <clears throat> secret application to the uh, magistrate that why she has gone what happened to her based on her statement police is deciding whether they should add section 370 or not but this should be also questioned because in many cases when the girl is being rescued in most cases they are being very 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 traumatized so at that point of time they may not say what actually happened to them and maybe give a very sketchy detail to the magistrate so a uh, police should uh, investigate properly in order to find out whether this is a trafficking or this is a case of abduction now uh, the question is that there are several avenues when we are uh, addressing human trafficking and child marriage so now the question is is it uh, media's duty to be neutral while reporting on these things no you cannot be media must take side while reporting at least anti human trafficking stories and anti child marriage stories new media cannot be neutral here because if media stays neutral these social levels will increase and media's duty is to inform and to educate by continuous harping on the topic and continuously writing against this people will be make aware that these are wrong we must not do this being objective is also not possible here here objectivity is dead objective can be in the political story objective can be in any of the hard news but these are not in that case quote unquote hard news these are feature, news feature because a people a person would like to read these stories as feature if you write that okay a boy was trafficked from bihar to west bengal for child labor purpose and he was rescued by kolkata police no one is going to read it and it will be a brief item now what we have to do we have to put it like a story that what was the condition of the of that person's uh, home at what circumstances he was brought to uh, kolkata and then what happened why this uh, boy is telling lie to the police that he has come on his own this all things should be investigated this all things should be noted and must be incorporated in the news and here comes the Uh, thing that raising a voice and driving a campaign so getting space on a newspaper is very difficult job especially if you write on these issues it always takes a back seat 
and in many cases because uh, political stories generally are the most hard stories and most read after stories you often hear that your, your editor will tell this these stories story does don't have any usp quote and quote a story bazar khabe na that means people won't read this story but i have always fight with my editors with all these things and i always make them believe that if you can put properly if you can write properly it is very much a new, uh, mainstream journalism part of the mainstream journalism and part of the broadsheet and i can assure that people will read this more than a political story but you have to write it properly if you write it in a very neglected uh, way and uh, you just put certain facts together weaving the facts together that uh, won't uh, make any attention to the readers and they won't read it so while uh, <clears throat> raising a voice and here i believe that while we are giving the story be it on page 1 be it on page 3 or be it on not page 3 in uh, in the from the entertainment segment page 3 it's not like uh, that uh, maybe on the city pages wherever the story is focused our objective is to make it prominent so what we can do we can put ex extra graphics to it we can educate people by giving certain provisions of the law we can uh, question certain lacuna uh, in the process like very recently uh, i have uh, writer i have written a story on uh, seven kids uh, five girls and two boys were kept in thana uh and all are minors that cannot be done so my colleague is asking what wrong is wrong in that so she has to understand that according to the jj act the kids cannot be kept in the thana that cannot be done so this is the thing you should know the law first without law, know the law you neither can raise your voice nor can drive a campaign or uh, whether media can playing the devil's advocate here here playing the devil's advocate is uh, very difficult because if you play devil's advocate uh, you will support the you will uh, support the accused and in many cases the accused generally get bells and uh, they are acquitted in west bengal there is uh, only 10% of the conviction rate in 2016 it was uh 1.4 percent now it has increased to 10 percent but it's a very very sorry figure so media has to play a social reformer at least in the case of child marriage and human trafficking without being the without playing the social reformer role you just cannot educate or inform the people and one thing i can say by continuously writing on this these issues on last eight years people are now aware there are several campaigns by the social uh, uh, networking sites there are several issues uh, have been raised by the ngos there are uh, police programs uh, like shankshidha there is uh, konnasri club there are several program to raise the concern of uh, child trafficking child marriage and child labor and along with this media is also fighting so i can tell that give, giving the voice to the voiceless when is the primary duty of the media and without media i don't think that uh, social levels of child marriage and human trafficking uh, can be fought uh, this is my uh, submission many things i may not have uh, mentioned because of the time constraint but there are uh, i am very happy that i can add this address that how how to fight with the editors to get the space to make it a mainstream journalism and also how to make people aware that these are crimes and you must raise your voice and has to give the give them the platform that what to do and what not to do
these are the things i want to address and during lockdown and things human trafficking has increased child marriage has increased everything has been reflected on the newspaper for not on the news channel but on the newspaper i would say newspaper is far ahead in covering these kind of issues than the news channels uh, so this is uh, my take on human trafficking and uh, child marriages and i think in future also our paper will support this cause and i am happy that i have managed to get some space on my paper almost uh, uh, <clears throat> every day if there is any story here everyone is very supportive and thank you so much for giving me this uh, space i don't know whether i will able to make my points clear but uh, thank you very much to everyone thank you so much ms banerji for such an effective presentation it's been really very helpful uh, and we've been listening to you for the first time thanks to uh, our president who who recommended you and uh, it's really nice and uh, the kind of comments we've been getting is really very very inspiring and as i said we've uh, been having participation from all over the country uh, students uh, teachers journalists they've all been uh, uh writing on the chat box as well i'll i'll read out some of them uh there are some general questions so it will be for for the panel as such because we are roughly just over time so we have a very little time for the q and a but i'll just read out uh, some of them there's uh, uh dipendu choudhury he wants to uh, understand why uh, media people are not updated with uh, these issues that's one question then there is shubhashree jana who asks uh, what should be my responsibility or what can i do to stop a child marriage when i get information about uh, uh, something happening like that uh, there's a uh, shomik chatterjee uh, who asks about uh, the strategic use of uh, interpersonal channel, uh, uh, channels if that is also uh, an option for uh, uh, creating awareness and all that and uh, why doesn't media cover uh, success stories of survivors more often uh, then there is uh, shrabuni paul uh, who talks about uh, Uh, people uh, who are not connected with media there are there are a lot of people who are not who don't have access to media so how do we uh, take awareness to them and then there's a question by anita parihar ma'am she is a respected academic from uh, mumbai she is asking what precautions you need to take uh, for your safety in order to cover stories correctly and completely as you said so uh, any of you can take that uh, starting with uh, dr manali uh, ms paramita niyogi and ms anisha banerji this is an open house now Dr. Manali, do you want to take uh, any of them? Uh, Sir, I think uh, uh, Madam from UNICEF will be better in a better position to answer this question. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The data and the statistics. So, Madam from UNICEF is Ms. Paramita Niyoki. So, it's uh, there are two Madams from UNICEF on the panel, please. Yeah. It's muted, ma'am. Uh, you need to unmute it. Uh, the audio is muted. Yeah. Yeah. Can you sure. hear me now? Yeah. So, which which is the question? There are so many questions that have come up. Which is the question you want me? To Basically, take? you know about uh, awareness, where where media doesn't reach people. You know what, what to do about that, and you know whether interpersonal challenges uh, you think are are effective in these cases. yeah of course i think um, media is not able to reach out there are uh, not many child protection functionaries at the beyond the district level so uh, as per the government uh, uh, scheme so uh, i think there are uh, the community based uh, protection groups some of them have been mentioned by yonesha in her uh, presentation there are uh, there are the panchayat members there are the uh, village uh, child protection committee members there are the self help groups Uh, there are the adolescent groups, the Kanyashri clubs. She mentioned that these are the children who go to school uh, and form the clubs in the Kanyashri. There are uh, there are the adolescent groups which are uh, led by the ICDS centers. So I think all these uh, people at the community level, at the grassroots level, should be mobilized uh, not only for awareness but also for information. Because as I mentioned earlier. any child getting married any uh, girl or boy leaving the village uh, for work not knowing whom and where the child is going to all this uh, needs to be informed and there has to be a 
proper information channel from where this information comes. Either it goes to 1098 or it goes to police or it goes to the panchayat or the SAGs where the prevention can uh, take place. I think uh, the other information channels, yes, I mean, it, it is the interpersonal, uh, other information channels are very much important. Ms. Baraji, you want to add something to that? Uh uh, yeah, uh, what uh, Paramita Ma'am has uh, told that is absolutely correct and I believe there are persons who always want to come to the uh, cause. They want to support the cause in stopping child marriage and st uh, preventing or creating awareness uh, against human trafficking. In that cases, they also can form uh, small groups among themselves and they can uh, contact anyone in the village uh, maybe small kids uh, they can carry out for uh, spreading the awareness and uh, maybe they can uh, go to uh, school or uh, through panchayat they can gather few uh, kids and their parents to make them understand that why these are not uh, okay and this must be stopped. So these things can be done so they can uh, form uh, two, two, three groups on their own with small, small numbers, maybe three, four people in a group and they are going to some villages and door-to-door uh, -to -door campaign they can do. These things is uh, possible, those who don't have the access of the media. Uh, and here Panchayat can, can come uh, because here in Panchayat there are two groups, one is uh, VLCPC and the other is VLCPC. So in, in both the cases, uh, they can be very helpful in uh, supporting uh, these causes, I guess. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, and uh, thank you, panelists, for, for your uh, learned deliberations. This has been really a very, very important session. And I, uh, one, one person probably has asked that uh, if uh, she gets to know that some child marriage is happening, what to do? The first thing she can do uh, can dial 1098 that is a child die number or any of the nearest police station that uh, a child marriage is taking place or to the child rights commission number which was given on their site so these three are the avenues she can dial any of them and can uh, just put the news that here the marriage is taking place and uh, this is the name of the bride and this is her address so in uh, that case, police and administration should take the action and uh, some NGOs, if are involved like Childline and uh, some other NGOs, they also can go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Baraji. Uh, just, for, just for an additional, uh, sure, Pandey, please, just for an additional information, information to what Anesha said, um, in every district in West Bengal, the district social welfare officer, the DSWO, he is the child marriage prohibition officer. He's the designated child marriage prohibition officer. So uh, it's important that uh, any person who uh, dials 1098 can also inform the DSWO and appropriate action will definitely be taken. The DSWO is at the district level, so DSWO can immediately inform the police and the BDO to take appropriate action. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this information. This is really, really very helpful. And thank you again, all participants, for your questions, for your observations, and for your presence. Uh, as I said, Dr. Monika Verma, Ms. Shama Kamdar, uh, Professor Shotubrutu Paul, Rajeshri Pehera, Dipendu Choudhury, Sneha Fernandez, uh, Shotubrutu Paul De, uh, Bhavesh uh, Dangar, uh, Shubhudi uh, Acharjo, uh, Professor Dr. Punita Harne, Devapama Mishro, uh, Sonu Kumar, Sonia Sain, Juhita Manji, Shubhushri Jana, Dr. Yogendra Kumar, Shomik. Uh, and and so many others thank you again mahendra jena uh, uh, shabani paul Braja mohan sahu uh, thank you again for your questions for your participation uh, professor anita parihar uh, puja prajapati and everyone else uh, thank you again i mean i can't thank you enough uh, you know professor dr ashwin kumar urbu shri banerji i mean there are so many people i can't take everyone's name thank you again for your participation and we are delighted that this could happen, you know, a, a webinar like this could happen. And uh, a document on the state guidelines for media personal on child production issues that has been shared on the chat box. It's there on the files. You can download that. It will also be sent to you with your uh, uh, registration, inf uh, you know, with the information for the next webinar and also with your participation certificate. So it will be made available to you. We also prepared a, a small video on effective storytelling. So that also is available there on the chat box. Uh, 
if you want you can have a look at that as well uh thank you so much uh, ms suchita bardhan ma'am for uh, conceptualizing and you know making this happen because uh, uh, we didn't we wouldn't have uh, been able to think of a webinar on this topic frankly if if uh, you were not there so i'm uh, participating in a webinar of this kind for the first time and uh, we've had uh, quite a few webinars of late so we are waiting to hear from you about uh, your final thoughts on uh, on this webinar thank you dr pande i think um, just like you and i can see um, a non verbal communication from mr sneha shishur also this is i think been one of the most successful webinars if i can say till date not only because we've discussed but also we have actionable points for us and by us we mean um usp as we call uma shankar pande usp and sneha shishda we have a lot of work to do in the days um, ahead um i cannot but thank the panelists um in the tremendous uh, uh, insights that they have provided each one of them and uh, i i don't want to do a, a summation of the points but i do want to leave home for ourselves to think a little more on the fact that some work has definitely been done we know that not everybody is an onesha but we do know and we have hope that there may be some more onneshas that we have to find out in the media because there are people in media who are willing to take on stories in the passion that she has demonstrated herself so there has been some kind of improvement in the quality of reporting as we have heard from both our panelists uh who are not directly related in reporting and that is dr manali and paramita and that is actually gives us an indication that there is a qualitative change because uh, evidences have been used uh, probably and and as uh, onesha also mentioned that um in infographics probably uh, have also been used to demonstrate the the change Uh, in reporting uh, interestingly we are always talking about uh, media ethics in reporting of this kind and uh, it's very important to hear that there is a lot of sensitization already however we have also heard about sensationalization and that means there is the onus on us as we look forward to the series of trainings that we are planning in 2021 and by saying this i am reaching out to both my colleagues here sneha shishda and usp that this is going to be a very important aspect as well and when we consider our training plans we have to keep that in mind uh but i am also very uh, interested and i'm happy that uh, all our panelists spoke about domain information yesterday we had the preliminary um, meeting for the training sessions that we are planning and these are some of the issues that we had uh, put up for discussion as well uh, and i fully agree and i cannot agree more that the issue or the subject or the domain uh, knowledge and understanding is that much important if we are to expect a very constructive fully uh, robust coverage of any topic beyond that of course uh, there is this very important thing that arnesha said feeling the issue i remember way back in when i was uh, teaching my students i used to say that if you really are interested be in the development sector otherwise you can find out other professions as well many years later i'm hearing this from onisha and i'm so touched to hear it because i understand that while reporting media also gets involved and she mentioned in one of her um, slides how they play a dual role and it is so important for media to understand which and which role is to be played and how to play it well um there is this very important uh, discussion on watchdog to society and accountability to people probably we also need to reach out to district and sub district media and uh, in a way that issues such as these which are very important and uh, information is not always readily available because we heard about access to information not only to people who need them but also to people who need to report about them and that is also another actionable point for us how best to reach that out to them there is this discussion about csos and probably i will also talk and have a discussion with my uh, colleague and i will throw it out for the others as well 
civil society organizations have been doing a lot of work on this. However, when it comes to reporting or sharing it with media, uh, they usually come up with a lot of detailing and probably need some handholding as far as um, writing a report is concerned. So how do we best reach out to civil society also so that information which is there already can be turned into, into news uh, reports and, and the newsworthiness uh, uh, can be kind of probably that skills transfer uh, can happen. Um, uh, very important again and something that we've been saying for a long time that reports usually talk about uh, the survivor or in many cases the victim about the stories relating around her or around him. Uh, it is time that in our storytelling sessions, which is also going to be very important as part of our training, how we look at it from the perpetuator, from the violators and talk about what are the policy provisions. What are the legal provisions which probably um, needs to be woven into the story so that a reader who doesn't have much understanding can also begin to understand that there are provisions and may uh, have the interest to look them up. Um, media as a social institution, a long time afterwards, I'm, I'm hearing about this and I can almost feel uh, Onesha going up to the editor uh, and, and negotiating when uh, she's being told that you're not a reformer. Um, so this is something that we hear all the time. I'm mentioning this because there is this thing about having media spaces, finding media spaces in mainstream uh, journalism and uh, that these are not information unless there is a violence uh, to bring up about uh, politics and crime and page three or sports are more important. And it's so heartening to have all our panelists actually focus uh, on this area. As I said, there is a lot of homework for us to do, and I am taking cognizance of that. Uh, we will come back again, maybe at some point of time, because I do feel that uh, we need to also reach out to our other media colleagues who are in the districts and who probably are that much more um, effective as well, only that we, we may not be having them here. So uh, I am uh, actually by saying this uh, again, I'm making a commitment that among all the work that we have to do, uh, these are some of the issues uh, that we have to keep continuing, uh, continuing to do so that media as well as people both in the district as well as the state uh, become more um, cognizant, more aware. And I think we are all social influencers. We are all very social media savvy these days. Uh, we can also uh, try and becoming, become uh, news reporters in a way that we forward important information. We know which ones are that much more important. Uh, I agree with you, uh, USP, that uh, this kind uh, of uh, webinars uh, have really not happened so many um, times before. And I think I take the privilege of thanking uh, the Press Club Kolkata for standing by us, especially Mr. Snehashi Shur, for indulging in us many times um, in the conversations that he allows us to do, which is also important, uh, and bring in um, issues that have not been addressed, uh, bring in people and representatives who are probably the best in the sectors that they represent. Thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure being part of this very engaging, very enriching discussion. Over to USP, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Bardhan, for these comments. And uh, like a good administrator, you've also set out, you know, what uh, me and Sunyashiza need to do for the next uh, few months. So uh, we take note of that as well. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's been a privilege for us. And, you know, we've had a long, we had a long uh, brainstorming in person yesterday at Press Club and uh, how to go about it. And, and this is so nice, you know, that you can uh, do things that uh, are, you think will, will uh, cause uh, some change somewhere. And that's very, very important as educators and as uh, communicators. And we're uh, really delighted to report, although that is not a point that I wanted to emphasize, that uh, uh, on the first webinar of 2021, all the panelists on this uh, fabulous topic are, are, are uh, uh, you know, very, very uh, deserving uh, women professionals. So we are delighted to report that it's an all women panel today and uh, all thanks to uh, uh, the press club president and to uh, uh, Shucharita Vardhan ma'am that, you know, uh, we could uh, have, have something like this. And I'm sure that uh, this will be not the first time and we'll have more and more uh, such occasions. Thanks again to uh, all, the, all our wonderful uh, people on the uh, chat box. And we've already had two people 
committing to be fellow travelers on this journey. There's Professor Anita Parihar. She says, I'll be very happy if required to associate in writing contextually and so on and so forth. There's uh, uh, Urboshi Banerjee and many others, you know, who have committed to, to join us on, on, on these uh, things. Uh, and with this, I am delighted to invite uh, somebody who's, a, who's been a teacher to two of us present on this panel, to me and to one of our panelists, uh, Dr. Manali Bhattacharji. And he also is uh, uh, he speaks very highly and very fondly of the other, uh, uh, you know, panelist also, Ms. Anusha Banerjee. So he's like a mentor to three of us here. And even Shucharita Ma'am says uh, he's been a mentor to you. So uh, so he's he's kind of a master mentor here, uh, the Honorable uh, President Press Club Kolkata, Mr. Sinhashishur. Sir, uh, for some reason, somebody has muted you. No, not somebody. It's me only. OK, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Pandey. Yes, um, I, I, I don't have to say anything much. Uh, all the panelists have done their job. They were serious. Manali has given an overview of over encompassing the entire area. Uh, Ms. Niyogi has uh, presented it uh, from her core uh, domain knowledge. And on Nesha as a person with full conviction, she has proved what uh, many of us have been discussing that yes, we can mainstream it. Mainstreaming of this issue is possible. If you can see it, you can identify it, you can uh, process the information properly with proper perspective, with proper domain knowledge, and you can present it, the storytelling. Obviously, the space will be there. There will be readership. Today, yes, people look for the paper where uh, Onesha is working because of such kind of stories, because people like to know there is a a segment of readership who are uh, who are really looking forward to this. Uh, I I cannot thank you. I you have done your job. You all are passionate, and Shucharita has uh, wisely summed up. So uh, no, nothing is left. Whatever is left is absolutely my personal feeling, which I do not want to share in this platform. You see why we are doing certain thing. If we get a result then we are the ones who are the happiest ones. And especially uh, all three panelists whom I saw them grooming and becoming competent and doing something for the society, I feel, uh, I feel very satisfied, including uh, the our uh, moderator and uh, obviously uh, Shuchurita also. That's a very personal satisfaction. I do not want to say anything on that. But yes, there are takeaways. Definitely the material on JJ Act, Juvenile Justice Act material on POXO. These things uh, will be circulated uh, all, to all the participants. And uh, henceforward, we will, uh, you know, familiarize uh, our, our fellow journalists on these issues. We need to sensitize our fellow journalists on these issues uh, because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, equipping them with material. And as Shucharita is always uh, saying that where to get the right kind of information, uh, that means the statistics and information which could be incorporated in the story and the storytelling will really work for that. I'm personally grateful and I acknowledge your hard work which you are doing and which you have done for this presentation. You have uh, you know, increased our, uh, our thought process, enriched our thought process and increased our workload, we need to take forward from the premises you have presented. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, uh, Shucharita. Thank you, Uma Shankar. And uh, with all your support, I think we'll be, Press Club Kolkata will be delighted to contribute something to the profession, to the society. That is the very fulfilling uh, endeavor on the 75th year of Press Club Kolkata, which is the oldest press club of the entire subcontinent. Thanks for your thanks for the support of the UNICEF. Thanks for the support of all the resource persons. Thanks for the support of all the participants. We are creating a space uh, for ourselves, by ourselves, which any one of you can fall back. Uh, the repository will be there in the YouTube, will be there. Maybe we'll create a separate website and will keep all these uh, repositories so that you can immediately uh, come back and fall back for all this information, all these lectures, presentations, everything. I have nothing to add. 
I don't know how did we uh, let uh, two hours go. We were we were stuck to all these presentations exactly two hours. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to you all. Thank you. Thank you again, but sir. I, and it, but and this I am is, honored that I have given this platform, and I think I am the junior most person here. I don't know whether I have met your expectations, but I have tried, and in future, if I can get another platform, I shall discuss certain issues which I didn't raise today. So. And I wish Prasha uh, bring this kind of program uh, along with UNICEF in future also. This is a very very informative session, and I'm really really grateful to you that you have kept me in mind and invited me in this platform. Thank you, sir. Uh, I must uh, uh, tell you that when we were thinking of all this, the first name that he spoke of was uh, so uh, that just speaks of uh, his confidence and. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, you'll be getting a lot more phone calls for for you know presenting in future webinars uh, uh, just after today. Uh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I'm delighted to report, and uh, you know the commitment of the panelists is so important for us. And uh, just a small uh, personal aside, Dr. Manali Bhattacharya called me this morning at nine and said that her presentation has crashed; the laptop can't be opened. So she, uh, whatever uh, she presented today was what she uh, made right in the morning after nine o'clock, and it was not even visible. So this is the kind of uh, you know support we've been getting from our panelists and from everybody, and we're delighted as uh, Sneasis uh, Sursar said. I mean, we uh, generally the moderators have to ask people to stop, but you know this went half an hour be, uh, beyond schedule, and we didn't even get to know about it. You know, we were all so engrossed and so very uh, you know involved in these presentations. Thank you again. I mean, I must thank three people uh, who have been extremely supportive, and without whom this uh, series would not have been possible. Our uh, webinar coordinator, Ms. Shreya Dev, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, our IT coordinator, Mr. Devan Bhaduri, and Ms. Sanjali Ganguly, thank you again. And our uh, creative head, Mr. Bimalendu Shekhar Bajpayee, thank you for all your work. I mean, uh, all the beautiful posters and everything you see, the certificates, is, is courtesy uh, Mr. Bajpayee. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Charita Bardhan and uh, Snehasi Sursa. Uh, I'm delighted to inform you that on the 8th of January, at the same time, same place, we'll be having the webinar 10 that will be on uh, uh, COVID appropriate behavior and practices, media's role in busting myths and misconceptions. And we'll be having uh, uh, Professor Ujjal Choudhury, the Pro Vice Chancellor at Adamas University, will be having Mr. Shoibal Bishat, a very uh, uh, well known journalist from Shottojuk, and we'll be having Ms. Veena Singh. Uh, a C4D specialist uh, from from UNICEF office for West Bengal. So I'm delighted to invite you again for uh, uh, our webinar 10 on Friday at 11 a.m. Thank you again for joining, and I'm, I hope you've all completed the feedback form, uh, which will uh, enable you to get the uh, certificates. Thank you, everybody. So with this, we end today's session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.